hello students and a very good morning to you students today we are going to discuss chapter 7 of class 8 science that is the cell let's have a look what we are going to discuss in this chapter in this chapter we will discuss about discovery of cell organization of the cells in organisms variety in number shape and size of the cells cell structure and function comparison of plants and animal cells and prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells so these three topics we will discuss in this part and last three topics we will discuss in next part of this chapter now students when we see in our surrounding we can see different type of organisms different type of living organisms plants animals and microorganisms obviously we cannot see microorganisms by our naked eyes we have to use microscope to see them but other two type of organisms means plants and animals we can see different varieties different uh, type of plants and animals when we see plants we can see different type of plants are there some are grasses some are herbs some are shrubs some are trees when we see animals in our surrounding different type of animals also we find found including human beings and in human beings also we can see that in human beings also there are so many dissimilarities are there means when we see the animals or plants we find different uh, characters in them means various similarities and dissimilarities are there so when we talk about the differences in the living organisms means the dissimilarities in the organisms then we can say that these organisms they differ in their size including microorganisms and other organisms they differ in their size some organisms they are microscopic in size like bacteria or uh, other amoeba etc we have to use microscope to see them other are macroscope macroscopic means they are large enough we can see them by our naked eyes as most of the plants and animals they are macroscopic they are different in appearance means some may be fat thin short tall some are uh, brightly colored some are very dull when we talk about the habitat then the different type of habitats are also there some plants and animals they are aquatic some are terrestrial some are aerial uh, some uh, plants they are arb- some animals they are arboreal also so when we find when we see them we find a lot of differences in the living organisms now come to the similarities means some common features are there we find in living organisms including plants and animals means including uh, all organisms living organisms some common features are there as for example all of them they require food means they do the process of nutrition they take food then they need air for the process of respiration and to remain alive they do the process of respiration by producing energy this process takes place in all living organisms plants animals and microorganisms they respond to external environment means they respond to the stimulus they grow and reproduce now students these are the vital activities which are very important for all organism means these activities as nutrition respiration growth reproduction response to stimulus all these activities we can find in all living organisms these are the vital activities which are performed by the one basic unit of the body and that basic unit of the structure and it is called as cell so cell is the basic unit which is responsible for performing all these activities whether the organism is unicellular or multicellular such type of vital activities takes place in all organisms and one unit is uh, responsible for it that is 
cell now we can compare cell by using bricks you can see this is a wall which is made up of bricks and you can see bricks so many bricks are there they are assembled together to make a wall so this is a wall and its unit is its monomer unit or its one unit is brick now come to the next image this is the structure of a cell means this is the structure of a onion peel here also you can see so many cells are there they are arranged together they are assembled together and they make it so we can say that as in the wall the building block or, or the unit the monomer unit is the brick just like that in all organisms the building block is the cell now we can say the cell is the basic unit of structure and function of an organism means in all organism cell is that basic unit which make the structure of that organism and which is responsible for the functioning of that organism so cell is the basic unit of structure and function of an organism and the study of cell is known as cytology now the next topic of this chapter is discovery of cell so you know that cells are very tiny that is why they cannot be seen by naked eyes so the discovery of cells is related to the discovery of to the invention of microscope so in 1665 robert hooke he was an englishman first time he discovered the cell now how he discovered the cell he observed the he took the slices of cork from the bark of a tree and from that bark of tree he took some slices of cork he placed them under a microscope and he observed when he observed then he find some little structures are there little box like structures are there and exactly what he saw he drew all that pictures and he published all that pictures in a book that is micrographia micrographia itself it means a small pictures so it was the book in which he published all that pictures that he drawn from microscope he observed a number of tiny little boxes or compartments in the slice of cork just as appeared as honeycomb that is why it is also given the name as honeycomb structure robert hook was called that structures as honeycomb structure and he gave the term cell to each box because in latin word cell means little room so hook observed as boxes or cells in the cork that cells were actually uh, dead cells and he named them as cells so first time robert hook in 1665 discovered the cell but that uh, cell they are just up, they were just appeared as a small box like structure that was so tiny by using that type of microscope for the detailed structure of a cell and the for the functioning of uh, for knowing the functioning of various part of the cell that were discovered by the invention of electron microscope because that microscope is able to uh, see to uh, produce larger images of the cell organelles now next topic of this chapter is organization of cells in organism so students in your previous classes you have studied that cells they group together to make tissues organs and organ systems and they finally lead to make any organism so we know that what is cell cell is the basic structural and functional unit of any organism now when a group of cells and which type of group of cell these cells should be of same size shape and function and when they group together means cells of same size shape and function they group together they form tissue so 
one type of tissue is simply it is uh, it contains the cells which are similar in origin structure and function so when such cells group together they form tissue so tissue contains a group of cells of same type now next is organ so organ is a structure that contains more than one type of tissue means different tissues they group together to form any organ organs they are normally big enough to be seen with the naked eyes and as for example brain is a organ heart is a organ uh, in uh, plants we see different organs as root stem uh, these are the organs of the plant okay now next after organ the next one is organ system so we know students that organs they do not work alone means if we think the heart is a an organ and it if will uh, work alone or root of a plant it is an organ so it will work alone so this is not possible organs they do not work alone so generally number of organs they work together to carry out a particular function so a group of organ that work together it is called organ system so number of organ which are grouped together and which perform one function that is called organ system so just you can see the example of your digestive system so the organs which take part in the di digestive system you know the mouth the food pipe then your stomach the intestine and so many other related glands are also there so these are the organs all of them they group together to form one organ system that is a digestive system and each organ system has a special function okay so your digestive system has a special function to digest food now after that all these organ systems they work together and they form an organism okay so just take the example of human body so many organ systems are there digestive system respiratory system circulatory system excretory system nervous system all these systems they group together and they work together to form an organism and obviously these organism are multicellular now next is variety in cell number shape and sizes so first of all we will discuss about the cell number in which we will study about two type of organisms that is unicellular and multicellular i know students all of you are knowing about unicellular and multicellular organism because you have studied it in your previous classes also so just Uh, recall it unicellular organisms means organisms that consist of only one cell that consist of single cell such organisms are called unicellular organism and you know in that single cell only which is present in the unicellular organism it performs all that important functions like respiration nutrition movement growth and reproduction so one cell only it is responsible for all that vital activities taking place in unicellular organism now some examples are the amoeba bacteria yeast and so many other organisms are there they have only one cell and they are unicellular now come to the next type that is multicellular multi means many and cellular means cells you all know organism that have more than one cell they are called as multicellular organism so in multicellular organisms uh, there may be organs or organ system also that you will study in your higher classes that some multicellular organisms they have only tissues some or, uh, organisms they have only organs and they some have and most of them they have organ system so the organism they have more than one cell they are called multicellular organisms as for example fish elephant human beings mango trees mustard plants and so many all almost all these animals and plants that we can see by our naked eyes they are multicellular now cell shape so 
cells they are found in different shapes and their shapes they are related to their functions so let's have a look uh, of some different uh, shaped cells first of all we will see the shape which are irregular means cells having irregular shape as amoeba in amoeba you have studied that it is unicellular and it has irregular shape means there is no any definite shape in amoeba why you know because it has irregular shape and so many projections uh, which is called as pseudopodia or false feet and with the help of it it can move very easily and these structures they help in catching food also so amoeba has unicellular structure which is irregular because it help that irregular shape help it in movement as well as in catching of food now white blood cells also they are known as soldiers of the cells so you know you uh, these white blood cells they are also irregular and very easily because they are irregular they can uh, invade any structure they can uh, follow they can chase the bacteria or other uh, microorganisms or other foreign particles and they can kill them they can feed upon them that is why they are having irregular shape now next shape is round or spherical shape so you know that uh some cells they are rounded or spherical and as for example egg cells egg cells or ovum they are rounded or spherical then spindle shaped so our muscle cells they are spindle shaped spindle shaped means they are uh, long and pointed at two ends so they are spindle shaped then elongated thin and branched as for example our nerve cells they are very long they are very uh, they are branched also as you can see this is the nerve cell so nerve cells are long they are branched and uh, so many thin thread like structures or projections are also there that is why they can send messages uh, over long distances in the body so that is why nerve cell has such type of uh, shape then kidney or bean bean shaped so our guard cells of the plant you have studied about the structure of stomata so they have guard cells and they are kidney or bean shaped then long and rectangular shape so mesophyll cells mesophyll cells are present in leaf they are long and they have elongated shape which allow more chloroplasts to be there in the cell and it help in the process of photosynthesis so you can see this is the structure of mesophyll cells then discoid or disc shaped so our rbcs are red blood cells these are the rbcs these are the red blood cells they are discoid or disc shaped and just because of shape because in class 7th you have studied that they have biconcave disc shaped uh, structure and it provide more surface area for absorbing an, uh, oxygen because you know that in rbc hemoglobin is present so it has such type of a structure which provide it which give it more surface area for absorbing oxygen so cells they have some definite shapes or if shape which are uh, cells which are not having definite shape like amoeba and white blood cells so whatever shape they are having their shapes are related to their specific functions now next is cell sizes so cell sizes also they vary a lot cells may be as small as a millionth of a meter which is called uh, as micrometer or micron and they are as large as a few centimeters so we can see a lot of examples of these type of cells we know that most of the cells that which are very small in size they are microscopic and we have to use microscope to see them because they are not uh, visible to our eyes because without uh, any aid we cannot see them and some cells they are so large we can see them by our naked eyes so as for example first of all we can see our uh, blood cells they are very small they are the smallest cell means in our body blood cells are the smallest they have 7 micron in diameter and our nerve cells which are very long and branched they are longest cells they are having uh, size of 90 cm or more 
So smallest cell in our body is our body uh, blood cells and the longest cells are nerve cells. Now kidney and liver cells, they are about 20 micron to 30 micron. Again, they are uh, microscopic. Then ovum or egg cells, they are the largest cell in human body. Okay, nerve cells are the longest and ovum or egg cells are the largest cells in human body. Then unicellular alga, acetabularia, it is a green alga. It is of about uh, 10 centimeter long and this alga, it is used in experiments so uh, of uh, related to nucleus so this acetabularia this is a green alga it is only one cell the structure and it is of 10 centimeter long now eggs of an ostrich it is 17 centimeter in diameter and it is about 25,000 times bigger than our red blood cells then mycoplasma, they are the smallest bacterium. They are the smallest cells having 0.00001 millimeter size. So this is all about the first part of this chapter. The next topics of this chapter we will discuss in next part of the chapter, ne in next video. Thank you students.